Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can take some really simple music theory and turn that directly into guitar licks. So if you know what a major scale is, what a pentatonic scale is, and how to find the third of a chord, then you can use all three of the ideas that I'm going to go over in this video. The first idea is to use the arpeggio from the third of the chord. So I'm going to do all my examples in the key of C major, and I'm going to use two different chords to demonstrate them. So I'm going to use a D minor 7 chord and a C major 7 chord. So if we take a D minor 7, you probably know already that if you're playing over a D minor 7 chord, you can use a D minor 7 arpeggio. So that'll be this arpeggio. And you can also look at the third from this arpeggio, so that's an F, and then take the arpeggio that's found on that. And in this case, that's an F major 7, so. And if you compare those two arpeggios, then you'll see that the D minor 7 is D, F, A, C, and the F major 7 is F, A, C, E. So they're actually the same notes, except for one thing. Uh, in the first one, we have the root, the D, and in the second one, we don't have a root, but we have the ninth, which is an E. So we're pretty much playing the same notes, we just added an extension. So that's a nice way to get some more colors into our lines, and a line with that might sound like this. In this line, I'm starting with the F major 7 arpeggio, so... And then I'm running down... And then up again in the D minor pentatonic scale, something that we'll get to in a bit. And uh, from there I then repeat the F major 7 arpeggio. And then ending on the 9 to really emphasize that. If we do the same with the C major 7 chord, then we get from the C major 7 arpeggio... And then the 3rd, which is an E and then we have an E minor 7 arpeggio. So again, the C major 7 arpeggio is C, E, G and B, and the E minor 7 is E, G, B and D. So we are playing the same notes, except we have a 9 instead of the root. A line with this could sound something like this. So in this line I'm mixing up a lot of things. Uh, the first part of the line is actually straight out of the A minor pentatonic scale, which of course works really well. It's also the C major pentatonic scale, so it works well on a C major 7. And uh, the second part is first the C major 7 arpeggio, and then an E minor 7 arpeggio. And then really bringing out the 9 at the end again. Whenever you learn something new, it's really important that you also try to incorporate it so that you can use it together with all the other things you already know. So it shouldn't be so that if you learn something new, then it's isolated and you can only use that you really want to mix it with all the other things that you use when playing over a chord. And that goes for this as well. So you want to use both the C major 7 and the E minor 7 arpeggio. The second idea is that whenever we have a minor 7 arpeggio, we can also use the minor pentatonic scale. So if we look at a D minor 7 arpeggio, D, F, A, C, and D minor pentatonic, then that's D, F, G, A, C. So they're the same notes, except in the pentatonic scale we also have a G, but that sounds just fine on a D minor chord, like this. A line using the minor pentatonic scale could sound something like this. You want to mix everything up that you know, so I'm just starting with the F major 7 arpeggio, because now we have that in our vocabulary. Then I'm descending down the minor pentatonic scale, skipping down, and then I'm doing this exercise in playing. It's kind of like playing the minor pentatonic scale in, uh, in diatonic triads, because we get first this stagger falls from, from uh, D, and then the F major triad, ending on the root. So let's try and use the same approach on the C major 7. So the C major 7 arpeggio is of course not a minor 7 arpeggio, but the arpeggio from the third, E, which is an E minor 7 arpeggio, is. And that means that we can actually use the E minor pentatonic scale, that would be this one. A line using the E minor pentatonic scale over a C major chord could sound something like this. I'm just starting first again with uh, a line coming straight out of the E minor 7 arpeggio. And then we get this line on the E minor pentatonic. So again using this sort of stack of fours and ending on the 9 of the C major. The third idea is to use leading notes. So we already have the D minor 7 arpeggio. And before each of the notes, we can actually add a leading note a half step below, so that would be this. 
This is not the kind of thing where you want to add all of them all the time, but you want to use them a little bit more sparingly. So use put a leading note in front of one of the arpeggio notes once in a while. That could sound like this. I'm starting on the third, then I'm adding a leading note under the root, and then just up the pentatonic scale, down the arpeggio, then another leading note, this time for the seventh, so. And then using the arpeggio from the third, so there's an F major seven arpeggio. And then down to the root, and then ending on the fifth. If we do the same for the C major seven, so we have the C major seven arpeggio here. And then adding leading notes would give us and align with that could be something like this. Uh, I'm using leading note for the third, and then I'm just running up the minor seven arpeggio, so the E minor seven, then another uh, pentatonic fragment, leading note for the seventh, then down the major seven arpeggio and then ending on the 9. As you can tell, I'm really mixing and using all the three ideas in the examples for this video. And I think you really want to work like that. You want to incorporate everything new you learn and use it alongside all the other things that you already know, so that it really becomes a part of your playing. If you want to check out more stuff on jazz guitar, learning some new arpeggios, how to use pentatonic scales over extended chords and chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday, and I've been doing it for some time already now, so there's already a lot of videos and a lot of material on my channel. If you want to get a notification whenever I upload a new video or a vlog or a backing track, then press the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe button. That's also a huge support for the channel. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching, and until next week.